What is up you ambling astronauts, it's Chris with Tabletops and Tentacles, and this is Die Alone, a solo RPG podcast. So right off the beginning here, I just wanted to thank everybody that has joined the Facebook group or subscribed to the podcast. I appreciate the feedback we've gotten so far. Um, just kind of started this podcast as a interim project until we can get our game group together again regularly and start recording the Tabletops and Tentacles podcast again, but I've gotten a strong enough reaction and response to this that I may just keep it up. I love solo RPGs, and there's not a lot of focus on them in the podcast sphere right now, so I think I may just keep on doing it. Why not? Uh, (laughs) And to that end, if there's something that you think I should be playing on the podcast, let me know. I'm focusing on one RPG each week to play, then I talk about it the next week and introduce the next RPG I'll be playing. We also have a Facebook group, and I just started up an official Dialone Twitter account as well, and that's under Dialone RPG over on Twitter if you want to join us there. Uh, My Deeply Dapper account on Twitter is... Well, it's a little bit of everything because I've got most of my art stuff through there. I have a pretty heavy horror group that's on there as well as the RPGs and board games. So I thought starting up one that was sort of focused on solo RPGs, solo gaming, and just sort of the TTRPG world in general would be a good way to keep my brain slightly organized, which is saying a lot, frankly. (laughs) One other note, I do have the recordings from one of my sessions of Long Haul 1983, and I just have to get in there and edit them to post, and I will be posting that as a bonus episode. I also have one of my playthroughs of The Wretched on there. Uh, I ended up having a little bit of a, a, let's say a falling out with my voice recorder I was using for these, and it decided to lose about half of the recordings that I had made, but luckily I did have some survivors, which is saying something for the wretched, frankly. Uh, So I will be releasing those when I get a chance to hop on there and edit those together into a cohesive little bonus episode. Uh, I will also just be recording on my computer for the future because my Zoom H1 and I have had a falling out. (laughs) <laughs> so this week for Die Alone, I played The Wretched from Chris Bissett, and I hope I pronounced their last name correctly. I'm really bad with last names, and I apologize if I did say that incorrectly. In The Wretched, you're the last surviving crew member of the intergalactic salvage ship The Wretched. Adrift between stars after an engine failure, your ship was attacked by a hostile alien life form. The crew are dead. You thought you'd won. You launched the creature out of an airlock, and that should have meant safety but it didn't. The Wretched is a solo journaling RPG played with a deck of cards, a tumbling block tower, and a microphone. And I think a six-sided die if I remember correctly. Uh, (laughs) I really was all in on The Wretched the first time I saw it. I think I picked it up in PDF form in the earlier format of it, and then when they did a Kickstarter for a new physical edition, I backed that as well, and I got it in the mail fairly recently, and it's a gorgeous little zine. It's uh, 24 pages long. It's just like this nice, like, sagey dark green, black and white. It's got minimal illustrations. It's a fairly minimalistic game design in the first place, and it's one of the things that really drew me towards it. I have an unheard of amount of RPGs, particularly in PDF form, that I have concerns I'll never really make it through. And to a certain point, I'm okay with that because, I mean, I've got to admit that I'm as much an RPG fan because I like reading them and imagining the worlds as I do actually playing them because I'm old, I live in Idaho, and all of my friends have kids now, so there's only so many opportunities I have to actually get together and play actual role-playing games. But that's one of the neat things about the solo ones, and that's one thing that I really like about some of these more recent indie solo games, is that they are 25 pages, and you can literally pull them out and start playing them without having to read 120 pages first. And I think that there's a place for both. I'm definitely going to be trying a bit of both. Uh, Iron Sworn sitting on my shelf begging to be played, 
and I can't wait to pull that out and play it at some point here. But in the meantime, I thought we would delve into some of these shorter format ones just because they're a little easier for me to get comfortable with playing solo RPGs. It's a very different mindset than playing with friends and especially in a world where I'm typically the DM sort of guiding the story and taking cues from what other people tell me is happening, it's especially different to play solo RPGs because as a DM, my playstyle is very much create these spotlights and just make sure the players end up under those spotlights at certain points. But other than that, let them guide the story. And instead with the solo RPGs, I'm guiding the story as well. And that has been an adjustment for me, absolutely. I feel like Long Haul 1983 was a really fun game and I could definitely identify with elements of it. But at the same time, stretching myself creatively to tell a story with it was a little difficult at times when I was playing that game. With The Wretched, I had a much easier time, and I know that part of that is just that I'm utterly entrenched in the alien uh, horror sci-fi world that's out there. That's one of my favorite genres. It's literally just something I think about all the time and <laughs> so it was a lot easier to pick up a game where you're the lone survivor on a starship surrounded by dead bodies with an alien skittering around on the hole outside it, that's easier for me to like unlock my brain and be creative with and I think there's a positive and a negative to both aspects of that because something like Long Haul, where there is a, a touch of Supernatural if you choose to play it that way, it doesn't guide you down this, like, pathway the way The Wretched does, where you kind of know what you're getting into. There's no question what the inspiration is, and there's no question what you're supposed to be getting out of the game. And I think as a new-to-solo RPG player, that's really beneficial. Um, I feel like the more I play these, the more I'm going to get out of them. The more I'm going to enjoy the more unique and esoteric takes on them as well. I think that that's going to be a really cool thing. And I think especially if you're new to it, The Wretched's a great place to start because you know what you're playing with it. You're playing an astronaut on a derelict ship with an alien outside that's trying to get in to kill you. It's simple, it's kind of beautifully elegant in its design. Long Haul 1983 was based off of the Wretched and Lone system that Chris came up with, so this does play very similar to that, which was actually beneficial for me diving into this as well. The big difference is that the Wretched has a tumbling tower, a tension tower, what's the word I'm looking for? Jenga tower that you use to ratchet the tension as you're playing the game. It represents the whole integrity of the ship that you're on. And that is a, it's a great mechanic that I missed out on the first time I played the Wretched because I didn't have a Jenga tower. And I'm kind of in awe at how simple and how much that enhances the gameplay with this system. There are alternatives, there are some different options on the, the blog that you can go to that kind of, you know, like you can use different cards to represent the tension, you can play it with dice, there are other ways to represent it, but none of it compares to the raw difficulty of staring at this wobbly tower and knowing that the wrong move means your whole integrity is damaged or the alien gets in and devours you. It's a really nice technique. And I really went into it thinking I was gonna hate it. And I love it. I really do. I I I really felt like it was unnecessary and superfluous to the gameplay and that I shouldn't have to go get a Jenga tower to play this game. But legitimately it makes a huge difference to the enjoyment of this game when you're playing it having that tower sitting in front of you 
threatening to fall at any given moment, particularly out here in my studio because my studio is like a converted like shed out in the backyard. And I'm a big guy and just my my simple walking around made it wobble every once in a while. And I was like, oh, this is, this makes it more tense. This ratchets the tension in a way that I didn't anticipate it doing. And it did keep it thematic. For me, that also meant that I basically had to play a game in one sitting because there was, there's no real chance the bull in the china shop that is me is going to survive with a half built tower hanging out on his art desk for more than a day. But that's okay because the Wretched plays really nicely in a session. It keeps it thematic. You can get into the mood with it. Uh, Chris did a soundtrack for it that you can find on Spotify. I got it as an mp3 as part of my Kickstarter backing thing, but it's available to stream for free on Spotify. And it's excellent. It's got just the right amount of ambient sound and music and atmosphere to really help you get into the mood while you're playing this game. And I highly recommend playing it while you're playing the game alongside it. Uh, so it's an interesting system. Um, basically each day you draw a certain number of cards to represent what you have to do during that day. And each of the different suits represents a different part of your task. So hearts represent your ship's systems, the life support, the water purification, and that type of thing. When you draw a heart, you're interacting with them in some way, whether you're doing essential repairs or booting up a system that was previously dormant. Diamonds represent your ship's physical structures. When you draw a diamond, you're physically engaging with the ship, you're patching holes, you're sealing doors, accessing new areas. Clubs represents the crew. And that was an interesting one because the clubs that you draw have you remembering your crew members or finding a personal effect of theirs and thinking about your relationship with these crew members whose corpses are littering the hallways of the wretched right now. And it's, it's a very different aspect than the other two as far as emotional and storytelling is concerned. And then finally, we have the spades, which represents the creature itself. And that one's fun. I enjoyed almost every spade I pulled in this. There's spots of the creature skittering around or sensing where you are through the hall. And it just really does have this great alien atmosphere vibe to it. Uh, so one of the things you're trying to do in this is you are trying to activate the rescue beacon and hopefully keep it going long enough to either get your engines going or to be rescued. Spoiler alert, this doesn't end well most of the times you play. I think I remember reading something that it's like 1% uh, win rate, if that. And the way I play, it's definitely not that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, first of all, I'm not great at taking stuff off that Jenga tower. I have big meaty fingers and I've never played Jenga before. And so I have no idea what I'm doing with it. My first playthrough of The Wretched made it an embarrassingly low amount of days because you pull six out at the very beginning to um, kind of represent the catastrophic damage that's already occurred to the ship before the game begins and <laughs> I, I, I I'm embarrassed to admit that the very first time I played this I wrecked my ship before I'd finished recording my first day's log so I'm just saying like if you're considering me as a member of your figurative crew on some sort of space voyage you may you may want to check other resumes, <laughs> but I do enjoy it. I luckily the Jenga tower is really easy to reset, so that's okay. Um, <laughs> I like this game though; it is fun, and all of the stuff that you do each day is very thematic for what's happening. Like I had a sewage leak at one point, and I stumbled across a crew member's journal, and I had to use a key card to get into a room to get something. And each of those disparate events 
managed to start telling a story as I was playing each time. And even when I would get the same prompt, what I'd set up prior to that prompt was so different that it flowed really nicely into the story that I'd started creating. Um, the one that I have the recording of that didn't get devoured by my evil recording device, uh, it's it has a point in it where I have to go out and fix something on the hull and the creature's been following me around inside it, so I use a key card to get in to get a radio to play the radio to distract the creature, and most of that just flowed through what I'd set up in the previous days in that adventure. It's it's really impressive. Like, so for something that's 24 pages, it's fairly minimal type. Like, in all honesty, you could probably fit this on two pieces of double-sided paper comfortably with the smaller font and everything. But the pacing on this is great. The the use of dead space in the zine itself is effective at adding intentional pregnant pauses to the play as you're going, which is something that I am not great at as far as graphic design is concerned, and I have to applaud just the layout and the way it tells the story through the layout for something this simple. Um, this has won all sorts of awards. There are a lot of games based around it now, and that's one of the things I love about the indie RPG scene is that they, they're not precious about the things they create. They like to see people enjoying the worlds and the systems and the games that they've made. So most of these folks, when they make a game, they make the system, the SRD reference document, available to other creators to hack and modify and make something special and different with it. And they're all so supportive of these other creations. And yeah, part of it's, you know, I went out and bought The Wretched because I was gonna play some of the other games. Or Mothership, I did the same thing. I picked up Mothership because I wanted to pick up some of the other adventures other people had made for it. But there's also just this feeling of like community and fun with it and you get to see a different hack of the same general system. And playing this one and Long Haul 1983 right after another like this really did drive some of that home. It's it's kind of neat. I'm really enjoying this so far. <laughs> so that was The Wretched. I obviously recommend it highly, especially if you are new to the solo RPG world and you're looking for something that hits that horror sci-fi vibe. It's a great first stop for you, and I really highly recommend having a Jenga tower to play it. it that is not a sentence I thought I was going to say, but it really does change the gameplay so dramatically that I can't see myself playing The Wretched without that tower active yeah, again. If you'd like to pick up The Wretched, you can find links to it in the description of this episode, or you can go to tabletopsandtentacles.com and click on the link to this episode there, and you can find links to the game in physical form at lutheroom.uk, and I actually have a coupon code from Chris on there that you can use to save 15%, and that is 3die6, which is the name of my RPG I did, and you can save 15% off. You can also find it on itch.io, and I think it's probably on Drive-Thru RPG as well. Um, they also have a Loot the Room Patreon that is patreon.com slash Loot the Room, and Chris is pretty active on Twitter under Pangalactic. I definitely recommend checking this out, and I, I'm a big nerd for the physical copy, and I think that the physical copy is well worth it. And make sure you get the, the soundtrack to play while you're playing this too, because man, the soundtrack's really great, and it really does add to the atmosphere. So next week we are going to be leaving the depths of space and heading into the depths of the forest for Through Hiker, a journaling game of long distance hiking by Daniel M. Perez. And I'm really intrigued by this game because I am not a hiker, but I do love the wilderness. <laughs> 
And I've had a couple of friends that hiked AAT, and I used to live out in Maine, uh, not too far from one of the the major on spots for that trail. And so I've walked parts of the Appalachian Trail a little bit. And this is a... I'm kind of excited about this. I haven't read too much about it because I like to go into these blind before I start playing them. It just sort of adds to my experience for me. But Through Hiker is a journaling game which tells us stories of hiking in a long distance trail. Using your writing instrument of choice, a pack of playing cards, and a series of writing prompts, you create stories of the joys and challenges of being on the trail for days, weeks, or months at a time. And I think that this is a really cool concept for that because the long distance hiking thing really does, <laughs> it has this strange element of both community and alien loneliness that is very suitable for a solo RPG uh, subject matter. I picked it specifically just because I thought that it was a nice change from the horror sci-fi of the last one and from what I've seen of this it doesn't have any supernatural elements although one of the cool things about these is if you want to add them you absolutely can. So that is called Through Hiker, a journaling game of long distance hiking and you can find that through High Moon Press and you can find links to that on my website at tabletopsandtentacles.com as well. And I am planning on talking to all of the creators of these games and trying to see if they have a discount code or a deal going for these if you want to pick one up and play it. And if you go to our Facebook group sometime in the next day or two, I'll be posting the list of the next few games I'm playing, as well as if I have any codes available for that so that we can kind of play alone together. <laughs> here on Die Alone. Um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I'd like to uh, clarify that my allergies have been absolutely killing me this week and recording this episode was a little bit of a struggle so it's coming out a little later than I planned and I can't promise you that it's not a little rambling because I am I'm a little rough right now, I'll say that much. Um, in fact, uh, one I don't remember if it's the one that I'm going to be posting of The Wretched or not, but I had to invent a virus that was making me sick because I was sneezing and choking on my own brain trying to kill itself while I was recording it. So, hey, yay, spring is here. <laughs> uh, as always, you can find links to everything I do at tabletopsandtentacles.com, including links to this podcast, our Patreon page where you can get our magazine, Tabletops and Tentacles, and any other cool little projects I've got going. Uh, Three Die Six, my new RPG, is in progress, and you can pre-order it on the website, and there's links to it there as well. Um, as always, if you are a indie game creator, especially if you have solo games that you would like us to play on the podcast, reach out to me. You can send me an email at tabletopsandtentacles at gmail.com, or you can use any of the contact forms on tabletopsandtentacles.com. Thank you so much for listening, and remember, we all die alone. I'll talk to you next week. <laughs>